Hey everybody, welcome. Andrew Ings with Golf Academy. Thanks for watching, tuning in today. Now, a disclaimer before we start this video. As in the title says, this is a tech review on the new Ping G410 driver. I do not have the driver to hit today, so if you're expecting me to see this driver being hit, get you some numbers, that ain't happening. So I suggest you, you switch off now if that's what you're expecting. But, however, if you'd like to know about the tech, and how this club's differed from the G400 and other drivers, stay tuned. Okay, let me explain why I don't have the G410 driver in my hands today. The date you're watching this video, hopefully, is Monday the 21st of January after two o'clock, 2 p.m. UK time. That was when the product embargo was lifted. That's when you can launch your videos and show the world what you've been doing. Now, I'm not a big enough YouTube channel yet uh, for Ping to feel that, uh, that they're gonna send me product. I understand that and I don't, I don't have a dig at Ping. They're gonna send it to the bigger channels, Mark Crossfield, Rick Shields, these other guys who have a lot more subscribers than me because they wanna get maximum exposure. They can't send it to every Tom, Dick and Harry. So I get that. So here's where I need your help. I need, I've got about six and a half thousand subscribers at the moment, so I need to grow the number of subscribers so that my influence gets bigger on YouTube. Then people like Ping or maybe other companies will send me some product early for me to test and you'll get their YouTube videos early before the release. I don't get product in store uh, in my fitting center here till February the 7th, so I've got a couple more weeks to wait before I can actually hit it. But what I've got today, hopefully, is a great tech review where I can show you some lovely pictures and graphics and explain to you how this new G410 driver differs from the 400. So let's get stuck into this uh, tech spec. So there's two heads to talk about. In the past, there's been three. We're down to two heads in the G410. We've got the G410 Plus and we've got the G410 SF Tech straight flight technology, trying to counteract the ball going to the right for a right-handed golfer. Flash up some images over here and some details so that you can look at the pictures and the, and the, and the information as I talk about it. We've got this new aerodynamic crown. It's a 445cc head. It's made of titanium. There was speculation it was going to be a carbon crown, but it's all titanium. It's a TIE 811 head. That's the material they've moved, made it out of. The turbulators, which we've seen on the G400 and the, the G, um, they've tapered the front edge, so a small change on that. This is for less friction and less drag, which should give us more club speed. Smallest change, I would say, there. We've got internal Dragonfly technology, where Dragonfly technology is where they're trying to save weight on the crown of the club, and then use that weight, move it into other areas. Um, so this contributes to higher MOI. MOI is a buzzword which stands for moment of inertia. Think of moment of inertia as a resistance to twisting. So high MOI on a club will keep the club face much more stable, stop it twisting at impact. If your club's twisting less, you should be hitting the ball straighter. Um, ultra thin tie 811 crown saves weight. That weight's redistributed within the head to optimize CG, another buzzy word, center of gravity location, which generally in modern drivers uh, tends to be low and if it's the face, they tend to position the weight low and back to help launch the ball high with low spin. Change number three, custom center of gravity locations. For the first time on a ping driver, we are seeing, and you should see it over here on the graphic, we are seeing a sliding weight bar. Now, Ping have resisted doing this because they've never felt they've quite got the engineering right, but this time they do. Remember, Ping are an engineering company who just happen to make golf clubs. They will never release anything unless it's, they think it's an improvement on the previous model and they think it works. So we've got this three weight position to shift center of gravity location to influence shot direction. We've got the draw, neutral, and fade settings. We can move that weight around. I, bel I don't know for sure how heavy that weight is. I'm guessing it's somewhere between 10, 12, 15 grams in weight. Um, and Ping says that moving it from one position to another inf can influence shot direction by 10 yards. 
So if I teach a lot of golfers who, right-handed golfers, you hit the ball pretty straight, and then as the ball gets to the top of its flight, it tends to bend off to the right there because there's a little bit too much side spin on it. They're saying that this can take off 10 yards, okay, or change the dispersion by 10 yards. So, correction. That would be brilliant if that works. That remains to be seen and needs to be tested. That's what they're saying. So if you're a bit of a fader, you can self-correct. Uh, if you're a bit of an overdrawer, you can move maybe the weight into the heel of the club um, and, and count, sorry, into the toe of the club and try and counteract that from happening. So we've seen it on lots of the clubs. Nothing new there, but it's new for pink. We've got this eight lobe trajectory tuning. This is a biggie for me. And the previous model, on the head we could adjust uh, by 0.6 of a degree up and one degree up and down so we could take a ten and a half driver we could loft down to nine and a half nine point nine or down to nine point five and we could go up 0.6 of a degree and one degree now we can go 1.5 degrees one degree and 0.6 of a degree up or down so that gives people like me club fitters the ability to tune the trajectory uh, to suit the golfer. That's a brilliant thing. So let's say you buy a 10 and a half degree driver, you could loft that up to 12 degrees or you could loft it down to nine degrees. And the other thing I believe is that as you change the loft, it doesn't tend to affect the face angle as much as it's done in the past. It tries to keep the club a little bit more neutral. I think there are a couple of upright settings or even flat settings, but the majority of those settings keep the club face fairly square and we're using the weight in the back to influence shape, is my understanding of it. We've got this forge face, which we saw on the Max G400 driver. I think it's, a, I'm not sure if it's a different material, this T9S Plus face, which is thinner, hotter. We've seen that before in lots of other drivers. They're using a unique forging process and heat treatment to make this face hot and create, keep the ball speeds up even across the face, even if you hit it out of the heel or the toe. That's all we've got to say about the head. Shafts, we've got some big info here on shafts. There's a brand new stock shaft called the Alta CB Red 55. Uh, in all the usual flexes, soft regular, regular stiff and extra stiff. It's 45 and three quarter inches long as far as I'm aware. Uh, this is a high trajectory, lightweight, counterbalance shaft. Now, I've got to put my hand on my heart here and say I am not 100% up to speed on what counterbalance shafts do or don't do in drivers. So I need to find out a little bit more about that. Um, we've still got the Tour 65 and 75 shaft, brilliant shaft. That comes in a little bit shorter at 45 and a quarter, which I like, I'm not a big fan of the longer shafts. Uh, this is a lower launch, less spin, and a little bit more stable. And then we've got two up market upgraded shafts, but no extra cost. Come back to the cost in a minute. We've got the 10 size CK Orange, very popular shaft for the tour players. Uh, we've got that in regular stiff and extra stiff. It's a mid trajectory and again this slightly counterbalanced shaft. And then we've got the Project X Even Flow Black. There's a little graphic up over here so you can see these. Low trajectory, no upcharge again. Even Flow Black 75 available in 5.5, 6 and 6.5. So again kind of regular stiff extra stiff. No extra charge. I think that's amazing because in the past um, Ping have done aftermarket shafts, but there's been an upcharge of 40, 50, 60 pounds to get those all on price. So again, for fitters like me, it gives me loads of options um, to try and tune the shaft to influence ball flight. Price-wise, I think this driver is going to be retailing at 399. That's where I think it will start its life. And ping prices generally tend to hold very steady. No one tends to discount. It's a bit like when you buy Apple products, everyone's kind of selling it at the same price. Everyone buys, people like me, we buy the product pretty much at the same price. Everyone's getting it at the same sort of cost price, uh, unlike other companies where you can get bigger discounts if you're a bigger retailer. So it's a bit of a level playing field and that's why you don't see much fluctuation in ping prices. So we think it will certainly settle under 400 pounds. Could be 389, could be 399. Um, there we have it. Can't wait for me to get it. I really desperately want to test this club and see how good it is. I'll have it in store um, early Feb. 
So as soon as that arrives, we'll do some full product hitting review. But today was just to let you know a bit about the tech, how it works. I'm sure by now the big boys have got their reviews up, your Rick Shields, your Mark Crossfields and all the others. I'll be on there like you will, having a look and see what they've got to say about it. Thanks for watching the, uh, the tech spec. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Be back soon, as I say, when I've got the product to hit. Don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you think it's worth it. All the best. Bye for now.